gangster chica chica uh, I, i'm no gangster that's obvious but you know who is granny and david williams gangster granny today we are on chapters 28 and 29 let's get started with chapter 28 drawn and quartered i'm terribly sorry to interrupt said the queen in her clipped tones but might we get back to the important matter at hand? I still don't understand why the two of you are here in the Tower of London in the middle of the night, smelling of poo-poo and attempting to steal my jewels. Well, once I had started, the lie grew and grew, your majesty, continued Granny, avoiding Ben's eyes. I didn't mean for it to happen. I just got carried away, I suppose. It was so nice to spend that extra time with my grandson, to have fun with him. It reminded me of when I used to read him bedtime stories. That was in the days when he didn't find me boring. Ben fidgeted. He was starting to feel guilty, too. Granny had lied to him, and that was horrible. But she'd only done it because she was upset that he thought she was dull. I had fun, too, he whispered. Granny smiled at him. I'm glad, little Benny. I'm really sorry. I really... Ahem, interrupted the queen. Oh, yes, said Granny. Well, before I knew it, things had snowballed. We were planning to take on the most daring robbery of all time. We climbed up the sewage pipe, by the way. We don't usually smell like this, your majesty. Oh, I should hope not. Poo! Ben was feeling really guilty now. Even if Granny had never been an international jewel thief, she certainly wasn't boring. She had helped plan this robbery with him. And now, here they were in the Tower of London at midnight, talking to the Queen. I have to do something to help her, Ben realized. The robbery was my idea, Your Majesty, he said. I'm so sorry. Please let my grandson go, interjected Granny. I don't want his young life ruined. Please, I beg you. We were going to return the crown jewels tomorrow night, I promise. A likely story, murmured the queen. It's true, exclaimed Ben. Please, do what you want with me, your majesty, continued Granny. Have me locked up here in the tower forever if you like, but I beg you, let the boy go. The queen looked lost in thought. I really don't know what to do said the queen eventually. I am touched by your story, as you know. I, too, am a grandmother, and my grandchildren find me adorable sometimes. Really? asked Ben. But you were the queen. Oh, no, the queen chuckled. Ben was stunned. He had never seen the queen laugh before. She was usually so serious and never cracked a smile when giving her speech on TV at Christmas, or opening Parliament, or even watching comedians at the Royal Variety Show. But to them, I'm just a boring old granny, she continued. They forget that I was young once. And that they, too, will be old one day, added Granny with a meaningful look to Ben. Exactly, my dear, agreed the queen. I think the younger generation need to have a bit more time for the elderly. I'm sorry, your majesty, said Ben. If I hadn't been so selfish and moaned about old people being boring, none of this would have ever happened. There was an uncomfortable silence. Granny rummaged in her handbag and offered the queen a bag of sweets. More mint, your majesty. Yes, please, said the queen. She unwrapped it and popped it into her mouth. Gosh, I haven't had one of these for years. They're my favorite, said Granny. And they last so long, added the queen, as she sucked it before composing herself again. Do you know what happened to the last man who attempted to steal the crown jewels? inquired the queen. He was drawn he was hung, drawn, and quartered, asked Ben, excitedly. Believe it or not, he was pardoned, said the queen with a wry smile. Pardon, your majesty, said Granny. In sixteen seventy one an Irishman by the name of Colonel Blood tried to steal them, but was caught by guards as he tried to escape. He hid this very crown I am wearing under now under his cloak, and dropped it on the ground just outside. King Charles II was so amused by Colonel Blood's daring attempt 
that he set him free. I must Google him, said Ben. I don't know what Googling is, said Granny. Nor me, chuckled the Queen. So, in royal tradition, that's what I'm going to do. Pardon you both. Oh, thank you, your majesty, said Granny, kissing her hand. Ben fell to his knees. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, your majesty. Yes, yes, don't grovel, said the Queen haughtily. I cannot abide groveling. I have met far too many grovelers during my reign. I'm so sorry, your majestical royal majesty, said Granny. That's exactly what I mean. You're groveling now, replied the queen. Ben and Granny looked at each other in fear. It was hard not to speak to her majesty without groveling at least a little bit. Now, jolly along quickly, please, said the queen, before this whole place is overrun with gods, and don't forget to watch me on the telly on Christmas Day. Chapter 29. Armed Police it was dawn by the time they trundled back into Gray Close. This time there was no police car to give them a lift. It was a very long way home from London on a mobility scooter. Over the speed bumps they went, bump, 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 and whirred into Granny's drive. What a night, sighed Ben. Ma would, yes. Good golly, I do feel rather stiff from sitting on that thing for so long, said Granny, as she eased her old and tired body off the scooter. I am sorry, you know, Ben, she said after a pause. I really didn't mean to hurt you. It was just so nice spending time with you. I didn't want it to stop. Ben smiled. It's okay, he said. I understand why you did it. And don't worry, you're still my gangster granny. Thank you, said Granny softly. Anyway, I think that's quite enough excitement to last a lifetime. I want you to go home and be a good boy and concentrate on your plumbing. I will, I promise. No more heists for me, chuckled Ben. Suddenly, Granny froze. She looked up. Ben could hear a helicopter whirring overhead. Granny? Shh! Granny adjusted her hearing aid and listened intently. That's more than one helicopter. It sounds like a fleet. Woo, 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 woo! The sound of police car sirens screeched from all around, and within moments, heavily armed police surrounded them from every angle. Granny and Ben couldn't see any of the bungalows in the close anymore because they were trapped behind a wall of policemen in bulletproof vests. The whir of police helicopters overhead was so deafening that Granny had to turn her hearing aid down. A voice came over the megaphone from one of the helicopters. You are surrounded. Put down your weapons. I repeat, put down your weapons or we will shoot. We haven't got any weapons, shouted Ben. His voice hadn't broken yet and he came out a bit girly. Don't argue with them, Ben. Just put your hands in the air, shouted Granny over the noise. The gangster pair put their hands up. A number of especially brave policemen surged forward, pointing their guns right at Ben and Granny. They pushed them over and pinned them to the ground. Don't move, came the voice from the helicopter. Ben thought, how could I move with a great big policeman kneeling on my back? A flurry of heavy leather gloved hands made their way up and down their bodies and fumbled through Granny's handbag, presumably searching for guns. If they had been searching for used tissues, they would be in luck, but they didn't find any weapons. Ben and Granny were then handcuffed and brought to their feet. Out from behind the wall, a policeman stepped an old man with a very big nose, wearing a pork pie hat. It was Mr. Parker, Granny's nosy neighbor. And don't you be a nosy neighbor. Go ahead and let's have a discussion. Let's discuss what happened in that story, in that chapter. Let's go back and let's review and talk about the things that happened. Have a great rest of your day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for chapters 30 and 31.